Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Adventures in Dog Training with American Standard Dog Training and American Overwatch Canine Services. To my left here is Bronx. He is a 19 month old Cane Corso or an Italian Mastiff. And today's episode is going to tell you all about the Cane Corso, our experience with them, our experience training with them, and ultimately, is the Cane Corso right for you and your family? So we'll see you in the episode. So in this episode, we're going to tell you everything we know about the Cane Corso and if we think he's right for you and a good fit for you and your family. Uh, we'll start off by telling you our history with the breed. Uh, we got our first Cane Corso about 10 years ago. Uh, the dog's name is Zephos. We call him Z for short. And uh, he's still our personal dog. He's an old man now. I'm going to bring him out later and compare and contrast him to uh, Mr. Bronx here. Again, Bronx about 19 months old, 160 pounds outside of the breed standard he's, he's still growing his head hasn't even really started to develop yet uh, when he's all finished growing he'll have what they call a pumpkin head his head will probably be just absolutely monstrous um, and it's not small now by any means but he's still kind of in that funky teenager age where he hasn't fully uh, full he's not filled out right so he's kind of long and lanky um, as you notice he's got his tail cropped he has his ears cropped sit good Good boy. As I was saying, you notice he'll have his ears cropped. Uh, there's different styles of cut for ear cropping. Uh, you can kind of compare his ear cropping to the cropping we did on our dog's ears. Uh, it's just the breed standard. You don't have to do it. There are some kind of corsos with floppy ears, but I definitely pre prefer the look of the cropped ears. And I highly, highly recommend you get that tail cropped because just because of how tall they are, and uh, how happy-go-lucky a dogs these are, their tails will knock everything and just clear out your uh, coffee table. So you definitely don't want to crop that. And the whipping action caused by a tail like that could actually hurt you a little bit, you know, not permanently. It just ain't gonna feel good smacking on your leg. So like I mentioned, we are very familiar with the breed. Uh, our first exposure to the dog was when we went to a breeder's house to check one out because we were interested in the breed. Um, again, about 10 years ago, uh, I've been very familiar with police dogs. I'd had German Shepherds in my life uh, growing up since I was a baby. Um, I just wanted to try something different, but being around police dogs my entire life, I didn't want a soft dog. Uh, so I wanted something different, something that nobody else had at the time, or not a lot of people. It was very much unknown breed. Uh, 10 years ago. Now it's becoming more and more prevalent. So we went to a breeder's house, checked one out for the first time. It had been imported from Italy. It was about two years old. And when that dog entered the room, I've been around police dogs my entire life. When that dog entered the room, I was genuinely terrified. It came in the room, calm as a cucumber, right? Now I guess that's not a phrase, but very calm. And he was probably like a, a nice sized male, maybe 130 pounds. I think he was a blue brindle color, which you're going to see uh, our other dog is. He's black brindle, by the way. And when he came in the room, his presence was just, uh, just undeniable that he, he owned that room. He wasn't mean. He wasn't aggressive. Come on. we got to stay here. Pretty for the camera, Bubba. Sit. Very nice. How about a piece of food for that? Good boy. When he came in the room, I just I was sitting on a couch, and I was genuinely like, concerned for my well-being. dog didn't do anything. He just gave me that look. And there's a look that a Cane Corso will give you that no other dog will give you. Um, it's a calm look, mouth closed, and they just stare at you. And uh, it makes you contemplate <laughs> life, right? Your life will flash before your eyes. Uh, I'm joking a little bit, but they are a very, very intimidating dog. Probably, in, in my opinion, one of those, the most intimidating dogs, uh, just because of their size and and the look that they have with those big uh, huge heads uh, those cropped ears oftentimes people who yeah very serious oftentimes people ask what what is a cane corso um, some people refer to them as cane corsos I, I like the pronunciation cane corso they are italian um, so i i just describe them as a pit bull on steroids um, because pit bulls can be very intimidating looking uh, a lot of musculature uh, but these take it to the next level. Uh, I also say like they would eat a pit bull for breakfast, right? These are monsters. 
So that's our history with the dog. That's how we met it. And then we, I got, I fell in love with the breed. I ended up buying one from um, a breeder that trained his in protection sports. Because uh, if I was going to get one, I wanted to get a full speed version. And so that's what we got. Uh, so our boy Zephos is on the, uh, just on the lower end of what's acceptable as far as size. And I was aware of that when I bought him because his, uh, his father was uh, a little bit smaller, but a beautiful dog nonetheless. And in the end, I'm, I'm not a big, uh, I don't care that much about breed standards. I mean, I, I understand the reason for them, but in the end, I just, I care more about the dog's workability, their sociability. Um, are they going to be a good dog or not? And of course, if they look nice, but if they're 10 or 20 pounds heavier or 10 or 20 pounds lighter, no big deal in my opinion. All right, so we're back. Uh, first, I want to apologize. I ramble on a lot. I talk in circles, but there's a lot of information to get out there, and I don't have cue cards in front of me, so we're just going to start to spit the information out uh, as clearly and concisely as we can, but, you know, if you come to my channel, be prepared for uh, long soliloquies about dogs, but hopefully you learn a lot. So we're going to talk a little bit about Bronx. Uh, so Bronx was, came from a breeder, I think, up in Georgia. Uh, I don't know the, the breeder's name. Um, they're obviously breeding for size. And like I said, he's 160 pounds and still growing. So that he's gonna fall outside the breed standards. I wanna say the breed standards are uh, maybe about 140 pounds for males. I could be wrong about that. And, and check this out. You see how he's paying attention to our friend over there in the golf cart? Very, very much a guardian breed, very much protectors of the house. And so they wanna know what's going on and they wanna keep an eye on things and make sure our friend over there in the golf cart doesn't do anything hinky, right? Not that we expect him to, but he doesn't know that. So very much on high alert. And he's almost in that, that Cane Corso look that we're talking about, where they get real serious. They wanna be, for lack of a better word, bodyguards, right? They wanna be at that, the front of the house, on the outskirts, checking anything that might come through, right? Like, like a, a bouncer might check your ID. He's gonna check you and see if you're, uh, you're supposed to be there or not. Are you a good person or are you a bad person? So always on guard, that's for sure. So come back over here or pee on camera. Perfect while we're talking. Yep, he is a dog. All right, we try to get all that out. So I don't know if you can tell by how tall he is, um, how big he is. Like I said, 160 pounds, tall, very tall. Uh, I'm 5'10", 230 uh, for record. So I'll try to stand up straight, get a feel for where he's at. Uh, he's well above my knee, right in my mid thigh where his butt is. Uh, he should be finished growing as far as height and length wise. Now he's just gonna start filling out. They will actually keep filling out to uh, give or take two years, but then that head will just keep growing, right? They're just gonna keep putting size on. Um, so. We'll say they're fully grown around three years old. All right. So uh, my guesstimate, based on how big, how big he is now, uh, 160 pounds, he'll probably maybe stop growing around 185 pounds. It's just a guess. And if we want to get a take a look at his paws, if he'll let me without rolling around too much, I'm not really a small guy. I don't really have small hands. These are his paws. <laughs> he's a monster, absolute monster. And if you want to ask about slobber, yes, they do slobber, uh, drool for sure. Uh, not always, they don't just sit there and drool all day long, but if they're running around exercising, if they're excited, feeding time, drinking water, forget it. It's gonna get everywhere. Um, we've owned one for 10 years. That's my biggest complaint about the breed is the drooling. Um, I've heard that there's other kind of Corso lines that don't breed. Uh, breed that don't uh, drool and yeah they have tighter lips so we're gonna talk in circles here again from our experience they do breed uh, I don't know why I keep saying that in our experience they do drool um, again when they're excited when they eat when they drink when they're exercising drool and just standing out here in the heat a little bit of drool coming out and as you saw I got on my hand just in one swipe uh, so and you see it's on his paw. Now why I say that is, when they come in from being hot or they drink a lot of water, one of the first things they do is shake their jowls like that. And you see I'm simulating it. And they just start flying, the goobs fly. And so we've had goobs on our 11 foot ceilings. Past the walls, hit the ceiling. Uh, that's not common, but they get all over the walls. So that's our biggest complaint about the breed. Uh, I always joke and say that what, there's like four elements, right? Uh, you got water, ice, 
uh, different states of like liquid. <laughs> yeah, help me out. You got water, ice, gas. I'm no scientist, but this is like the fifth element. It's like a plasma. All right, this stuff here, it's so gross. <laughs> but it is, it's what ends up on your wall. That's what ends up for sure, always right here on your pants. Uh, and without fail, you're gonna be ready to go out on a hot date and your dog wants to see you go and he comes by and rubs you and leaves a little, it's a snail trail, folks. Let's be honest, all right? It is a snail trail right on your leg or your arm or wherever. So it's just one of the, the qualities about them that you have to get used to. Uh, it never gets... You never get used to it. It's gross every time. So the drooling, again, there are some other lines out there that maybe, maybe they've kind of bred that out, but that's, that's a separate discussion we're going to get into in a minute. Uh, maybe we'll get into it now. So let's uh, start that one up. <laughs> 